Hi, it's Hazel and welcome to my channel. This is another thrift haul video. And um, before you gasp at any prices you might see, just be aware that almost everything I show you today was purchased during um, a thrift store bag sale. <clears throat> So they charge, a f this particular place charges a flat rate of $10 a bag, and it's a, it's a good size bag, uh, a, f a fabric bag. And um, then if you have items that don't fit into the bag, they, uh, they charge 50% off for those items. So um, because I have quite a few textiles, and... Um, because I have quite a few textiles, I folded them. You know, like your mother always told you to fold up your clothes. Don't just throw them on the floor or bunch them up. So I folded them. And of course, that made me be able to get more into the bag. Um, so that is one thing. I Before we get to this, though, I want to welcome you if you're brand new. I know that um, I love thrifting videos. And I know that a lot of other people do. So um, you'll find that I my channel has a fair number of them. I should also point out if you're new that I live on a farm in, I guess, I don't know, north central Alberta. And um, I live five miles away from the nearest community, which is a village of less than 400 people. So needless to say, any thrifting that I do is either in Edmonton or other communities I visit around the province. And um, so it's not easy for me to thrift, <laughs> which is probably a blessing. Uh, that's why I still have a roof over my head and money in my bank account. Uh, seriously, um, I think availability of uh, or convenience of thrifting uh, could potentially be a problem for me or <laughs> maybe even you. So that's good to know. And the other thing I'm really proud of today, this is a Sunday as I'm taping this, and of course it'll be scheduled way into the future, um, there is an online auction that I became aware of. So this is my strategy for uh, auctions. Um, I take a, a look at the listing and read any descriptions that may be of interest to me. And these are not necessarily things for this business, for the scrap, the journal making and the um, paper crafting, but also, you know, personal items or items that my husband might need or my daughter with her vegetable cabbage collection, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> So I do a cursory look through the auction and maybe a few days later, I, okay, I learned a rookie mistake. I thought, oh, if I like something, I better hit the minimum bid. Well, I found out that that doesn't work in your favor. All it does is indicate to other potential bidders, oh yeah, somebody wants this. And it could start a bidding war even before the bell rings for the sale. So um, anyway, learned that lesson. <coughs> so then I look through a few days later, I will look through the listings again if I have time and I'll see if there has been any movement. So uh, people obviously now with online bidding, people can bid, you know, for probably up to a week before the actual sale. So, you know, it gives me a good indication. So for instance, in this sale, there was some original art that I was interested in. Um, because, you know, I am an artist and I understand what it, you know, the invest or the cost of creating art. Um, you know, the training, the talent, the time to actually do the thing. Um, matting and framing and so on. So I thought, oh, I want to keep an eye on this. And I don't know, it might have had a $6 bid on it or something. And this is for two large paintings, two large watercolors. So I then will write down, because again, you know, as a memory aid, I will write down the lot numbers, one or two descri word description of what it is. And then I will 
um, kind of decide if I want to actually spend the two or three hours watching a sale. So, um, yesterday, last night, I looked at the site and I saw that those paintings not long, you know, still probably 24 hours before the, or 12 hours before the start of the sale, uh, the bid was up to $69. So I'm thinking, yes, I'm, I know in my heart of hearts, I know it's worth that and more. I also know it'll go for considerably more when the bidding actually begins. But I also keep in mind the buyer's premium, which could be anywhere from 10 to close to 20%, which means that, yeah, you're thinking you're, you think you're getting a great deal, but add another fifth on to that. <laughs> and that might change your mind about what's a good deal and what isn't. Um, and then I guess there's also the cost of the time. Yes, I have been known to spend a few, especially if I was, you know, really wanted something. I've been known to spend a few hours with the the auction kind of silently running on my uh, laptop while I, I actually craft. So that's okay. I mean, you know what? It, I, yeah, not a biggie. But then... Um, I just had a look at this item last, or at this list, my this short list of mine last night. There was another painting, one single painting that was already up to sixty nine dollars. There was a vintage wardrobe, it was at eighteen dollars. Now that still is a steal of a deal, and of course it would have gone up. But I have to also be cognizant: do I have room for this? Now, in the past, we have been known to buy some exceptional, uh, you know, furniture pieces at thrift store or unbelievable prices, but we've also had to store them for a few years until we had a space to put them or, you know, a kid to give them to or whatever. And um, anyway, I guess back to the art if I don't have a place to hang it because the wall is covered, the walls are covered either with my own art or art that I have bought from people I knew or items I thrifted in the past, then why am I buying it? Unless it's a, you know, a rock bottom price to buy it, to pay the premium, premium uh, the buyer's premium, and then to store it is not making any sense. So, um, again, I'll use that old line. Do you, do you want a metal or a chest to pin it on? Well, <laughs> I didn't even go on to the auction site today. How's that for maturity and talking myself out of something? Um, so I've often said in the past that I'm the queen of rationalization. I can justify this stuff that I bought either because of price or or the need for it or, you know, now that I'm a regular happy mail sharer and receiver, um, you know, with the intention of giving it to people. But I can also rationalize why I shouldn't do something. So that might be a, a, a tool that you want to hone in yourself if you're finding that you're buying more than you're using or paying more than you should have. So... Anyway, <laughs> sorry if I've put a damper on a haul video, <laughs> but um, truly bag sales are a way to, to score. And let me begin finally. Uh, I'm just going to have a swig of tea. This is um, a metal uh, thermal cup, I guess. And I'm trying this lemon ginger tea. We know that both lemon and ginger has healing properties. So that's what I'm doing. So if you hear any slurping, that's me. So I'm not going to bother opening these, except maybe this one. I was kind of curious. Those look pretty darn cute. Um, and I don't know what Tribond is. but And I really, honestly, <laughs> the other day I watched a 
Kim Newberg thrifting video. And she says, just shoot me if I buy any more fabric. This doesn't even look like it's ever been opened. I mean, uh, ever been played with. Oh, oh, oh. oh they're, they're like the day they were printed. Oh, I was going to say, that. what the heck? They're all the same, but I guess it's like suits. Um, so all these shamrocks are little pigs. All the hearts are rabbits. The horseshoes are bears. Oh, only three suits and hearts? Well, whatever. Um, they are cute. And it, yeah, so Kim said, just shoot, you know, someone should shoot her if she just thinks about buying fabric again. Well, I'm kind of getting to that point with cards. I do love these irises. This one I thought might be interesting. It's uh, Cool Tricks for Kids. Puzzled. Okay, let's, that looks like it involves paper. Six inch square of light cardboard pencil ruler. Copy square puzzle onto the other side of the card too. Okay. I could baffle myself with that, I'm sure. Obedient eggs. So, yeah, this. And I have to say, and, and I'm going to blame uh, Carol and Carrie in particular for the fact that I would even pick up something like strawberry shortcake. In the past, before I saw these girls and their whimsical um, um, projects and they, their, um, uh, in Carol's case, memory keeping, I would have thought, well, I'm way past this. Why would I want to do anything, grab something like this? I have enough other things. I'm all grown up now. Uh, don't have any female grandchildren. So why? And now, ladies, girls, girls and ladies, I've seen the light. It's just like when I drank the the little golden book Kool-Aid. It's, um, yeah, yeah. So thanks for being enablers, ladies. Enough about that. Okay, this I just will show you. This was new and it's cellophane. I, I, threw, I threw out the wrapper. I mean, this pink kind of isn't my cup of tea. But anyway, it has these angled uh, cubby holes. And I thought, oh, I'm using my chisel point pens a lot more now. Maybe this is one step up from an elastic holding them together. And the nice thing is it doesn't take, it doesn't have a big footprint, so it won't take up a great deal of space. Um, and these are, oh, that's a Sharpie, but these are Lumicolor, uh, Stadler Lumicolor non-permanent pens. And I think that some of them are on the verge of being dried up. So let's keep an eye on them. And if they are, then out they go. A few more micro items. So, you know, little things like this are easy enough to, to fit into. Oh, good. I was wondering if I should, mind you, it was a bag sale. So what? how much space did this take? This would make a cute journal cover, by the way. I'll add it to my little boxes. Regular price, $4.19. Um, because it's a name brand, I thought it was a safe bet. Uh, I find I'm really going through a lot of scotch tape lately, so I'll just add that to my drawer. Add this to the pile of little boxes that I take apart. This I'll explain in a moment. Um, these are fancy dancy earrings. Of course, you know I can't wear any kind of costume jewelry, so this stuff will just go into my crafting jewelry, or maybe it'll even get added, maybe later today, that's the plan, later today it will be added to 
um, some ephemera or something that I'm working on for my blush journal <laughs> slash journals. Yeah, it's going to be multiples. Um, okay, I said I'd talk about that in a minute. And then I had already paid. I was heading out. And then I saw this. And I thought, uh, and in this place, I did pay full price or whatever they said. So, no, I wouldn't ever wear something like this, even if I could, without getting a rash. But the this is just a double elastic type thing. So, easy breezy to take apart. And look at the cute little frames. Um, so three, six little metal frames. Imitation rhodium plated stretch bracelet. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, okay, now, well, I'll show you these other items. And then the big bulky stuff is fat, well, textiles. Um, Angela, I scored some tool. Anyone who's ever received anything from her, whether it was a purchase through Maker's Market um, or a live sale, knows that she makes these big uh, flamboyant, poofy um, ties, bows around the purchase. So I don't know that I would necessarily do that. But um, I will add this to my tool collection. These are Offrey brand. Now, I think I've said in the past, these are only 25-yard rolls. In the past, when we had our store, we carried Offrey brand and, and ribbons and so on. And the, the rolls back in the day were 100 yards. So, shrinkonomics. Um... Okay, I'm not sure why I bought this. Um, they're very cute. They're these little portion cups of some kind, paper. I suppose the paper crafter in me thinks, well, this is what I do with it. That bottom will probably get ruined. Like, who doesn't love this color? And I don't know, Carol, correct me if I'm wrong. I always think that polka dots, like, why do polka dots remind me of the 50s? Is that when ladies used to wear, you know, poodle skirts and itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikinis? Like, but you can see that this, it could very well be a ready-made pocket. It's, uh... And it's, it's about seven and a half inches long. Now you'd have to get over the fact that the dots, the rows of dots would be, maybe you could go like this. Anyway, I will um, see what I can do with this. I just thought it was too cute to leave behind. Okay. I don't as I said, I don't know when you're going to be seeing this video. Maybe I will already have been to Manitoba and be back. In which case, you'll probably hear me talking about it more. There was this um, thing. It's got this Velcro closure. It has this pocket. It has Baisley. It has another pocket. It's got these short little handles, and we know sometimes short handles are the cat's meow because, you know, it's not something, if you're short, like me, not your purchases or your, when you're carrying it, it's not hitting your, your ankle. So, zippered, one, two, three, four zippered pockets, five, six, seven, eight zippered pockets. It looks clean, although I will give it a wipe with a uh, baby wipe. And I thought, okay, I am going to be meeting Kim uh, Newberg in Winnipeg, going to some sort of an event. Again, I'll just clarify, I was never a scrapbooker. 
I'm not even totally sure what a crop is, other than I think people pack up supplies, go to a, a meeting place and work side by side doing their own thing. Anyway, so um, she told me not to worry too much about bringing actual supplies, but I do need to bring my own tools. So you can imagine I can fit pans in here, my um, knives, um, small scissors, you know, a lot of stuff. Some uh, ephemera that I've pre, um, you know, fussy cut, maybe some, <laughs> some cards, <laughs> some cards. Oh, I never did look at this one. Sorry, guys. Oh, it looks like it's, it's just, um, what do these threesomes have in Com in common. So cream, baking, and club. Well, the answer is sodas. Cream soda, baking soda, club soda. Wise men, stooges, and musketeers. They come in threes. Yosemite, Toucan, Onko. Famous Sam's. Voting, John Wilkes, and Telephone. Oh, types of booths. <laughs> Cement shoes, wrecked ships, and anchors. Things that sink, gas, police, and train. So stations. Anyway, okay, so now we know about those cards. So I just thought that this was great. Um, I think she, the bags were not priced. I think she might have charged me two bucks for this. But that thrift store also has a loyalty program. So, you know, the purchases do add up. I gravitated to this because of this gorgeous cover and look at that it's got well i should first see if i can get this sticker off that little spoon is a pencil oh my goodness is that not the cutest oh, um you know, like I, I consider that I have a good vocabulary. I may not know what all the acronyms mean, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, but pretty good um, vocabulary. Anyway, one time when we were in Denver, my daughter-in-law had this whole display and she's not a, like the, the that couple, the, those guys are minimalists, trust me. But anyway, she, in the kitchen, she had this display with all these different sizes and shapes of wooden utensils. And I have a personal preference for wooden utensils because I hate the noisiness of metal stuff. And of course, that doesn't work well on, um, you know, nonstick pans and so on. I don't like... And even in a stainless steel pot, you wouldn't see me stirring anything with a metal spoon. So I have, you know, a pretty humdrum collection of wooden utensils. Anyway, so these things that, that uh, Carrie had were so cute. <laughs> right. And she says, oh, that's my spurtle collection. I thought, what? <laughs> Apparently those kinds of things are called are called spurtles. Look how cute this is. Red lines, this whole wholesome little collection here of milk bottles and us whisk and eggs and oh, a chicken. Carol, you're getting some of these. Anyway, I just thought that was cute. Okay, the 20, I, I'm not caught in a time warp. I know that it's, you know, we've long since passed 2020. But look at how perfect this little book is. And it's not dated. I mean, other than that being emblazoned on it, this book is in perfect condition. It's never been used. Nobody's ripped anything out of it. And you just enter the date. So this can easily be covered with something to bring it up to the right date, if that's the intention. So I'll put that aside. Then, if I would have spent a little more time looking, but it was, you know, maybe one of those start the car moments. Oh, I know. I also had an appointment I had to keep. 
So these are obviously identical. It says, to my daughter with love, caring thoughts. So I flipped through and I thought, oh, paper that is not very glossy. Nice illustrations. And I didn't bother reading the quotes, but, you know, good advice, mother to daughter. Then when I got this and I thought, well, okay, but they're two-sided. Although I suppose if I'd have thought ahead, but then you ruin the quote. Anyway, I thought, the price is right. Why don't, like, where can you get this much quality paper? Or even if a person wanted to actually keep it on their desk. Although there's no room for, there's no room for pretty stuff on the desk anymore. Anyway, um, I thought, well, let me grab both. And that way I have the benefit of both sides. Then I get home and I start flipping through it and I realize they repeat the illustrations. I don't know how often, but they definitely do. So I might have blown a dollar for nothing. Now this. Um, <laughs> let me just drag it in here. Quite often, I'll show you the cover. It was in not good shape. It had been taped together. Um, anyway, you have probably seen these sorts of record things in thrift stores. I've never really been interested in them because I thought, number one, I'm not a record, like I'm not a music person to begin with. So I wouldn't be interested in the records. Um, and... Sorry, I um, would, um, what am I trying to spit out here? I didn't know how to use the envelopes, these sleeves, these record sleeves. But of course, again, Kim Newberg did a flip through. And I did pay. I think she charged me. I said, how much is this? She says, uh, $1.50 for the whole kit and caboodle. And now, a day, some people are trying to charge. Not trying to. They are charging, you know, 3 bucks for a little 45 record. Anyway, Kim did a flip through off a journal. And one of the things she did... was now I don't know if her her paper probably wasn't as thick as this because I think usually the the liners are not quite um as thick as this paper I think they're more papery this is almost like a brown bag kind of weight anyway she well let me just I mean, this won't be very smooth because it's just me cutting with on a, on a rough fold, but and if you haven't checked Kim out and are not following her, then you're making a mistake. Um, okay, well, maybe this is the better example. So she folded this in half or wherever you want to fold it. I guess it doesn't matter. And of course, I'm sure the ones, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sure the ones she was using weren't bound into a binder like, or into a book like like mine was. But of course, we, we have a solution. We, we all own glue. Anyway, she used this as a signature page. So you just put it in there and you end up with... Um, pockets. Now I don't, okay, how would she have folded it so that the, or maybe it was a tuck spot, because really if this was in a journal, the pocket would be here, which is not the most convenient place. I might have to watch that again, or Kim, you can correct me in the comments. Um, 
But even if a person, okay, now this one you can see is pretty worn because, of course, the weight of the record. But again, that's easy. A person could cut this like this or cut it in half here. Ooh. The sheer brute force this woman has. Um, so this could become... Let's try to be a little straighter. Ugh. That is tough stuff. Sew this flap into a signature, and then you've got this really pretty nice looking and substantial pocket. So needless to say, I will be fooling around with this. Uh, just for the heck of it, let me <clears throat> count. One, two, three. Twelve of those pockets. So, heck of a deal. Like, just over ten cents each. Okay. Enough chattering. Let's get to the fabric. Now, I'm going to... I'll just... This is a, a duvet cover. So, clearly... And I've washed... I, anything that was, wasn't hand washable, I've already laundered. So isn't this a cool piece of, isn't this a cool design? So it's got this sort of, um, you know, distressed looking bike, basket of flowers, and the script. So um, there is a lot here to share. I'm going to have to, now that I, I've washed it, and now that I've shown you, I will have to figure out how to, how best to, uh, cut this up so that I can share it. Let's just see here. If we tried to keep the bike intact, well, we're kind of at the 12 inch mark. And if we try to keep the, well, sides are never an issue because you just turn them back and make it a side tuck or pocket or something. Okay, if we didn't do that back tire, Or maybe I cut some of this up and put it in my coffee shop and maker's market shop. Because uh, I'm thinking journal cover, but... Okay, so from tire to tire, sort of, it would be, you know, kind of 17 inches. But a person could easily let this be the focal point or, or you know, just do part of a... Anyway, you know the drill. Um, the other flower basket is not quite as attractive. It's more yellowy. And anyway, that is that. And this time, I'm thinking, okay, I paid 10 bucks for this bag. The store was already quite picked over because they had had a 50% off sale store-wide the day before, unbeknownst to me. I'm surprised nobody pick, picks up the damn phone and tells me this stuff. But anyway, just kidding. Um, this is a lace. Well, this is a dress with this lace. Uh, what do you call it? Anyway, this under, you know, solid thing here, which is a knit, and then this lace top. So, I mean... I think I like the navy better than the black, but it would be easy enough to cut along there, separate them into nice long strips, and obviously add this to my stash as well. Um, this I did wash and hang to dry as per the instructions. The bodice is just all navy. So again, now that I have shown you this, this will go to the bedroom and it'll be one of those things that I, you know, deconstruct as I'm watching TV at night. Um, I know you're probably thinking to yourself, if only Hazel had more uh, gift wrap. I don't think she has enough, poor thing. 
I've picked out some gift wrap. Now you can tell that this is really old stuff. It's in good shape. I think I have this exact pattern. Um, oh, I thought I had more than three pieces, but apparently not. This one I may be using kind of shortly, although that is a bit yellowish, but these colors would work in my blush journal. And who doesn't like some purses and stilettos? So, wrapping paper. And I do uh, intend, even though I, I keep talking about it, it hasn't happened yet, I do intend to uh, put some wallpaper gift wrap bundles. Well, maybe wallpaper too. Goodness knows I have wallpaper books. Um, into the Maker's Market and the coffee shop. But as I've said before, this all takes time. So, you know, I like orange, you know, I like paisley. This is kind of nice. I couldn't find a care label on it. I dared not wash it, so I didn't wash it. I, maybe you've witnessed it. I do typically give these things the old smell test. And if they smell like they've been, like that they're clean or they have been freshly laundered before they were donated, then I might not bother washing it. Um, this was a hand wash dress, so I didn't bother. Doesn't smell. Um, strapless. Again, pretty blue over, uh, lacy over. I hate when I can't, when I don't know or can't think of the right word. You know what I mean, but uh, I'm typically not at a loss for words. I typically know the right word for the situation. So again, there's a lot of it here. I'll cut this, cut it off right there, and that'll flatten it out. Uh, will I use the bodice? Probably. Um, I don't believe I have anything in this shade of blue, so that was a good one. <laughs> now this. I went to the kids, the, where the kids stuff is. Um, I have to say, <laughs> back in the day when my daughter was a little kid, uh, you didn't see uh, girls leaving the house wearing tutus like you do now. So uh, little kids can be wearing, you know, clunky wooden snow boots or gum boots if it's spring and the puddles are all are out. And they'll be wearing, you know, like a tutu in public. <laughs> uh, that's not how it was back in the day. So I'm, I'm, it's kind of foreign to me. But anyway, I thought, okay, we've got, now this is just that polyester lining. So that's not that big a thrill. But here are two other layers, different um, qualities to them. Now there was a wire I guess this has a wire, does it? Is it a wired edge? Maybe not, but something that's sort of giving that a bit of shape. Um, so needless to say, I will take this apart. Um, again, Kim has a series of videos on right now. Well, now, while I'm, while I am uh, filming this, I don't know if it'll be on while you're, um, watching it, um, making flowers, you know, with beautiful fabric. So can you imagine how nice this would be? And I, I have my strips, some strips ready to go, but I just have to sit down with the needle and thread and do it. Maybe that's a project to take to Winnipeg. There is something in here because I did pull out a piece of something. Yes, look, at it's fine wire or maybe not wire, but something. So maybe that's why this thing got donated. Anyway, snip and it's gone. Okay, this is an infinity scarf. I um, love these colors. 
It's pretty gauzy, which is kind of what you want in an affinity scarf. Otherwise, it, it gets too bulky. This is also that really loose weave that snags very easily. And who among us doesn't have a snagged scarf or two? It's got this cotton lace along the edge. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I didn't wash it. I'm sure if I would have put it in a lingerie bag, it would have been fine. I, I don't know. Lately, I haven't. I have hundreds, I'm sure, hundreds of scarves and pashminas and those kinds of things. I really, I almost never wear scarves anymore. I don't know if that's because I'm homebound or what. Um, this is some sort of a dress. Now, this also was supposed to be hand washed because it's probably rayon. But I didn't. 100% viscose. Uh, hand wash cold. Line dry in the shade. Like, that's a little too much for me. So I just liked it, again, because of the colors. And those flowers are gigantic. But they're also simple. It would be so easy to cut out a flower. Oh, and they're different sizes, so that's always a bonus. And here are two together. Um, to fussy cut the some of these flowers and then use them either on a page or in my art journal or whatever. Oh, I forgot to say, the reason I have this here, this wax paper, is because I finally did another art journal video. And I intend to do another one while I still have some of the mess out. Oh, damn it. Sorry. Um, I only have two more items to show you because the rest is on my pile of stuff to be ironed. Ugh. Look at this skirt. <laughs> now this is obviously some kind of uh, lycra type thing. But would that not make an awesome journal cover? And, okay, this is the seam here. So picture, oh, and these colors are perfect for the blush journal too. Okay, so pretend that this is, pretend that I've taken this apart. Can't quite get it smooth. Where's my ruler? So let's, I better not spill my tea on it. Okay, so if we want a 12 inch, now mind you, this is hem, so we probably want to hang on to that hemmed edge there. So maybe we would make this, um, we could make this 15 inches. That way we have a finished edge here. We could turn back three inches on this side and have another pocket, or I guess by the time you, you ham it, turn it back. Maybe the pocket ends up being two and a half inches deep, but that's still fine. Oh my goodness, I love that so much. Again, allowing some room for uh, turning up a ham top and bottom. So let's make that 10 inches roughly. So this is kind of what we'd have. I think I just talked myself into a project. Um, it also has this very prominent zipper at the back. You know, like I'll tell you, back in the day in Home Ec, if anyone would have tried to do something like that, I think they'd have been expelled. Um, having the zipper on the outside of the fabric is... <laughs> but, again finished edge here like I was thinking about this in the store I knew I was taking it couldn't waste too much time oh slight little snag there um because this has been done I want to find a way to use this 
Okay. Make a pocket. Like close this up. Make a pocket that you unzip to get into. That's pretty smart if I do say so myself. Okay, so unfortunately, because of the ironing pile, this is the last item. Now, I don't know if somebody made this. I guess somebody made this because there was no no, lab, uh, no label and no uh, care label. But look at this snazziness here. So we've got this fancy applique beaded thingamajig and a quick look. It doesn't appear that anything is missing or loose. You've got this, and this is black velvet. Maybe not velvet, velvet, but you know. So then we have this on this sleeve. Easy enough to cut around that, I would say, with sharp little fabric scissors. Leave the black around as an outline. It's got this pretty crispy, rigid, stiff uh, trim. But again, that could be a belly band, that could be page edging. So obviously two sleeves, two of those. This is quite a long thing. Oh, it's got this, look at the size of, look at the size of this slit. But let me get to the bottom. Where I'll show you the rest of the, what's going on here. Okay, so. Four more medallions that are intact. This trim, which is distinct. This trim, which is distinct. And then... Um, well, a person might not know exactly what's going on here until they, they begin taking it apart. I can, here's my stitch ripper. Let's just see. And again, by um, doing this in front of you, there's no chance that I'm going to put this away and not go back to it because the first cut is the deepest. Okay, once I get this opened up, we should be able to see um, if it's three distinct trims. Now there is, this is like interfacing here. Oi, this slit sort of comp, oh, just one stitch. Okay. Oh, so this is separate. And you know, this is great. TV watching, a uh, great TV watching job. Now what's happening over here? This may not be the easiest thing in the world for you to see because it's sort of black on black, but even I can barely see where the stitches are. get a gander on this. Okay, so this is definitely, there's a seam here. Let's see if I can just undo about half an inch or so, so we can all see what's going on. Here they used a contrasting thread. Oh dear. Looks like I can't quickly get to where I want to be. So 
maybe I'll just stop there. Um, I will say, though, that, you know, with something like this, obviously, this was part of my $10 purchase because it was stuffed into the bag. Um, it's possible to get these sorts of things. You know, uh, there are people selling trims and so on. You can walk into Fanny's or not Fanny's, but Fabricland or a place like that. You can go to Etsy where you'll get a few inches of trim and um, or you can buy <laughs> a garment and put in the sweat equity of, uh, you know, deconstructing it and, and going through these steps. You know, and it probably depends on number one, on the amount of money you have and your personal philosophy. Like if um, reusing and hating to think about stuff like this going to a landfill, uh, you know, if that makes your heart sad or your blood boil or whatever, then you may choose to go this route. And look, it's even wider when you open out the seam, the half inch seam on each side. Okay, so this is still a bit of a mystery to me. So I have to be careful what I'm doing here. Um, so yeah, if you if you are new, and I suspect that you know maybe some of the new subscribers are new uh, to the whole business, then you know consider thrifting as a, a way to get a few items in your stash um, it'll save you some money it'll give you a new appreciation for just how labor intensive this stuff is and i think the reason most of us you know aren't running screaming from the room when we do the math and figure stuff like that out um, is because we don't consider it work. We consider this maybe a mission or playtime or uh, mental health therapy or something. So, you know, obviously everybody's motivations, uh, financial status, time. Because, again, if you have a full-time job and you're trying to squeeze a bit of time into crafting, then chances are you're not going to have the time to do this uh, but you might have more disposable income than somebody who's you know retired and fixed income or whatever um so that was quicker when you can rip so yes i will be salvaging these pieces and uh hopefully having some photos on instagram once i get that complete and to be honest, I don't know, like this velvet clearly should be used. It looks like it's in nice shape. And then, of course, there's also the lining. Now, if my name was Kim, I would be committing to using every single inch. I don't think I can do that. But I will certainly um, be like a magpie and scavenge the stuff that is the most beautiful and the most useful to me. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Once I get my ironing done, I will make sure that those other items get shown in an upcoming thrift video. Um, if you are, if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing that. Uh, if you enjoy this sort of content, then um, a thumbs up is definitely appreciated. And please take a few moments to uh, write a comment as well that uh, makes all the difference in the world not so much to me but those people at youtube boy do they love those comments kidding i love them too that's i'm getting to know you that's why i'm considering you friends and not just uh you know customers um oh maybe i'll end on this this was is a cute little flower that I cut off a little kid dress. Now, I guess that it was it was so tiny that it still um, I guess assumed that the kid was in uh, diapers. So a cute short little dress with these gold polka dots on a white surface. Now, the fact that it was white and it was ch a child size 
obviously it has to be uh, dry or washable. So I did wash it, but I didn't know if I wanted this flower to get mangled. So I cut, this is uh, like the little arm, the armhole and the neck. So I cut this off just to save this flower from being mangled. And uh, so yeah, that little dress has its own little matching pantaloons or whatever you call them. <laughs> you know, the little matching panty that would cover up a diaper. Anyway, thanks so much for being here. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.